So I do have to ask you about the most recently discovered particle, the Higgs boson, the God particle. What is the Higgs boson? What it, what does the discovery of the Higgs boson mean to the world of theoretical physics? Well, it was a tremendous success. And um, it was not a surprise to uh, theorists in that area. Yeah. We knew that there had to be something there. Mm-hmm. But the fact that when I say new, it means we had theories that predicted with very high confidence that it had to be there. Yeah. But then we found it and, and it has the properties that were expected. It had never been seen before. So it's a validation of, of the approach that physicists take to the universe. Yeah. And it was an enormous experimental effort. It took a large amount of uh, you know, people's time. Thousands of people were involved in this. Yeah. A large amount of money, a very large ring around which these particles are accelerated. So it was a huge project and, um, and it succeeded brilliantly. So it's a, it's a wonderful discovery. What is the Higgs particle? It's a scalar particle and it's the only scalar particle that we know of. So that by itself makes it interesting. Every other um, particle that we've discovered that we think might be fundamental at least is a particle that has spin. Electron, for example, is a fermion with spin one half. So it's a proton. Mm-hmm. Um, the photon, the particle of light, is, has spin one. And if there's a graviton, the particle that carries gravity, it would be spin two. So everything we know has spin, um, with the exception of the Higgs boson. That's the only possibly fundamental particle that's a scalar. And it turns out scalar particles are hard to understand for a lot of reasons. So the Higgs is a mysterious particle. And it also plays a very important role in the standard model of particle physics. It explains why some particles have mass and some don't. Um, so, uh, and it explains why the forces that control nuclear decays, there's a force called the weak force, mm-hmm. which is important when uh, radioactive materials radiate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it explains why that's a very short range force. It's because uh, it gives ma- the Higgs particle gives mass to the carriers of that force. And when the carriers of a force have mass, it means the force is very short range. It's only effective over a short distance. Okay. So it, it plays a very important role in, in understanding the makeup of the fundamental forces of nature, um, why particles have mass. And if it, if it hadn't been there, the whole theory would have been nonsense. It didn't literally have to be the Higgs. There were some other possibilities that didn't make a lot of sense, but at least early on before we had better data, there were other possibilities behind the Higgs, but there had to be something at the energy that this uh, recent experiment was, was testing. If not, the theory would have made no sense mathematically. The discovery of the Higgs did validate the theories that we had, but it also, in a way, highlighted some of, like we were expecting more, or we were expecting to see some more particles, and as a result, they're trying to now upgrade the Large Hadron Collider. They're trying to upgrade it, yes. Yeah. So it, what, what, what is surprising from the theoretical point of view, although nothing else was needed, strictly speaking, but what is surprising is that there was just the Higgs and nothing else. So I think if you went back 20 years, almost every theorist, almost every particle theorist would have told you there's very likely going to be more than just the Higgs. And that has to do with what I mentioned before, that scalar particles are hard to understand. They don't make a lot of sense on their own. So one set of theories, one, one set of ideas would have the Higgs particle not be fundamental, but composed of particles with spin. Yeah, That's, again, still a possibility, but there's no evidence for it. Um, and a, a second possibility that would have helped with this conundrum would have been a whole set of other particles, super partners, so supersymmetry. Super um, right. And that would have resolved the, the thing that's hard to understand about scalar particles.